Hello, and welcome to another live broadcast in The Authentic Married Woman. I am your host, Karen Seitz, and I am a coach and a mentor to married women to teach them how to find their happiness within and, and to teach you as women the things that you have control over to change within yourself, within your life, within your marriage. They can dramatically impact and change the way you experience not only yourself, but also your marriage and also your life. So today I'm broadcasting live from San Antonio, Texas. Usually I broadcast out of Denver where I live, but I'm fortunate enough to be at a, um, a conference with my team at a new life center. So I'm broadcasting from my hotel room today. I tried to come on and do this video yesterday, but ran into some technical difficulties and and wanted to make sure I got on and shared this important information with you. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about how to break the chains that bind you in your marriage. And in talking about that, what I wanted to do today was to break down the quote that I posted last week in the group because a lot of times we can read these amazing quotes that are very inspirational, very motivating, we're very inspired by them. But a lot of times we might not take the time to really tease them apart and deepen our understanding of what those wonderful quotes mean. So I wanted to take that quote from last week and tie it into today's topic. And again, show you the things that you have control over to change that can dramatically impact and affect your marriage in wonderful, positive, meaningful ways. So that quote that I posted last week says, the best years of your life are the ones in which you decide your problems are your own. You do not blame them on your mother, the ecology, or the president. You realize that you control your own destiny. So today I want to take that apart and, and, and talk about what that really means in a way that you can understand it and see how you can make a change in your life and how you can make a change in your marriage. So what that really means is that in order to change the problems that we have in our life, in our marriage, we have to own them as our own, that they're not happening to us, that we have a part and we have a role in them, and that we create the problems that we have. And while that can be very difficult, and, and I, I know that the, I call it temper tantrums within myself, the temper tantrums we can throw of, but you don't understand my husband, you don't understand my circumstances. I didn't create these problems. And that can be our internal fight and our internal struggle because it's really difficult to look at ourselves and, and be honest enough with ourselves to see how we've created the problems that we have and how we're a product of our choices, not a victim to our circumstances. And a lot of times, just in our humanness, unknowingly, unconsciously, we live from this place of being a victim to our circumstances. But the problem with that and, and how that gets in the way of us being able to own our problems and actually create our own destiny and be in control of our own destiny, just like the quote talks about, is that that makes us a victim and it, it puts the power and it puts the control outside of ourselves. So let's take a minute to just briefly look at our three principles that set the framework for the group. Because that's really going to tie in to, to talking about this and diving into this. So the first principle of, our, of what we teach, of what I teach, and what this group is all about is that you are 100% responsible for your happiness. And while that's, that can be hard work, it can be confronting, we have to know that happiness is an inside job. And it starts with owning that our problems are, at our, are our own, that we are where we are in our life, that we are where we are in our marriage or whatever area of life we're looking at because of ourselves and the choices that we make and how we show up in our lives. And when we can see that, again, it's not to beat ourselves up or make ourselves wrong. It's to empower us to be able to change so that we have new choices, 
So, so that's part of taking responsibility for our happiness is owning up to where we are in our lives and how we've gotten ourselves there. The second principle is that the only person you have any control over to change is yourself. That you can't change your husband, that nothing he does can change you. That again, tying into what we're talking about today, if you can see that you've created your experience and, and you are where you are because of you, again, not to beat yourself up, not to make yourself wrong or bad, it actually empowers you to change because the only person you have any control over to change is yourself. And that last principle, the third one, is that what it really means to be an authentic woman or an authentic married woman? It's about having a relationship with yourself. It's knowing who you are. It's knowing what you like and what you don't like. So you can create your happiness. So you can give yourself that experience and, and give yourself the marriage and the life that you want. And part of having a relationship with ourselves, which is which can be a tough pill to swallow, is that we can't just see all the wonderful things. We also have to see the ways that we stop ourselves. We have to see the unconscious choices that we're making that are leading us to have the very problems that we're having in our life, the very problems that we're having in a marriage. That's, that's how we get to know ourselves. It's not all the wonderful things. Yeah, that's a part of it too. But again, I also have to see the ways that I stop myself and then I get in my own way, the, 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 way, the things I can't see that are often unconscious. But when I can shine the light on those things, and again, own my problems as my own, then that's what actually allows me to break those binds that I feel chained by because it puts me in the, in the driver's seat. It, it empowers me or empowers you. It puts you in the driver's seat of your life and of your marriage. So let's continue diving into this um, and I'll continue to, to weave in those principles to help you understand. So I wanna share a little bit of my own story and how I discovered this for myself, that the best years of my life have been the ones in which I decided that my problems were my own. Before learning how to do this for myself and learning how to change in a, a lasting way, in a way that allowed me to find my happiness within, allowed me to be in control of my experience and allowed me to build that relationship with myself as I had to start letting go of all my stories of blame and recognizing that the problems that I had in my life were be because of me, that, that I got myself to where I was. I, I, I was responsible for the problems I was having. And again, that was a tough pill to swallow, but it was the most freeing, most life-changing thing that I ever did for myself. I had spent years in counseling and in therapy. I had spent so much money on self-help books and personal growth workshops and all sorts of coaching and healing. But everything that I tried reinforced my stories. They didn't break me free of them. They, they actually reinforced them. And that kept me stuck for a long time. So when I started to learn how to take responsibility for myself and, and, and how to decide that my problems were my own, that's when things really started to change. And they really started to change long term. And, and, and I didn't keep cycling back to the same problems over and over again like I was in therapy. It was, you know, I'd, I'd come in every week and I'd talk out my life and talk out my childhood and, and talk out all the external details of my life. But then there was really no change. It was like, I might feel better for a little bit, but then I was right back in the same patterns and right back in the same um, unhappy experience of myself. And, and so I, I realized I had to do something different. So some of those problems just to share, because what we often don't realize is that we have the same stuff. Like we all have the same problems. It's not just you. And, and it wasn't just me. So I want to share some of the issues that I was really struggling with when I was on stuck on that hamster wheel in my stories and in my blame and in felt feeling bound by those chains and my life and my marriage and my career with money, with my family, 
Um, these were some of the things that I was coming up against. And so see if you can relate to these. And, and I promise that you can. And I'll share more about that in a second. But some of the problems that I was having that I was so desperately trying to fix were that I had no confidence. I didn't understand myself. I had a really low self-esteem. And I struggled for a long time feeling like I had no voice, that I didn't really know how to express myself. It didn't know how to bring me out into my life, out into my relationships. I didn't like the direction that my life was going. I, I felt ignored in my marriage. I felt ignored in my other relationships. Um, I felt like I never got heard and no one ever understood me. I was frustrated that all of my relationships with men ended up the same. It failed. Um, and then I would get out of a relationship and jump right into a new one and, and repeat that cycle for a couple of years and then end up alone again with another failed relationship. My life felt chaotic and unmanageable. Um, I felt like I gave and gave, but I never got anything back. Everything in my life felt like an emergency. There's all this anxiety, all this worry never feeling like I had any balance or any control over what was happening. And I felt unattractive, undesired, all of these things, right? And, and we see this again and again, whether we're talking with other women that we know, or even looking at some of the comments and posts in our Facebook group. Um, I posted a question a couple days ago about, you know, what What's the one problem that in your marriage that if you could solve, you would be doing a happy dance? And if you read through those comments, although I know we all have un unique circumstances and context in our life, but if you read through those comments, hopefully you can see that we've all got the same problems and, and that that's a good thing. Um, for me, I didn't want to know <laughs> that other people had the same problems as me. I wanted to think it was just me because unconsciously, I didn't know this at the time, but looking back and having done my work, I didn't want to know other people struggled with the same things because my problems made me special. They gave me meaning. Um, I was very attached to my stories and very attached to thinking no one else could possibly understand what I'm going through with all of these things. And, and that allowed me to hide. Again, unconsciously, I would have told you, I don't want to hide. Um, but on deep on the inside, I did because I wanted to protect myself from life and I wanted to protect myself from getting hurt. So I just to sh again, just to normalize that experience, we've all got a lot of the same issues. And that's a good thing because and that means we can do something about it. And that becomes the question. If you, if you can relate with the things that I just shared, the feeling like you have no confidence and no voice and your life feeling chaotic and, and feeling like you don't really have any control over it and being frustrated with the way your relationships always turn out. Um, and feeling like everything's an emergency and, and feeling like you give and give and give and never get anything back. If you're experiencing those things, the question becomes, what are you going to do about those problems? What are you going to do about it? Are you, are you going to sit in them and, and wait and wait and wait? For your husband to change, or your family to change, or your mom or dad to change, or your kids to change? Or are you going to turn the focus inward and look at yourself and say, okay, I don't have any control over those people, and I don't have any control over, the, over these things outside of me, but I do have control over myself. I can change that. I hear what Karen's saying. Let's look at that. When you start to do that, then you can actually do something about those problems. So do you want to do that or do you want to continue to stay in your stories and continue to stay in the blame and the anger and the resentment and the bitterness? You must realize that the choice is yours, that you can persevere, you can have resilience, you can solve these things, but you've got to look within because if you continue to blame those external factors like I did then you're going to be stuck in those things for a long time. And I don't want that for you. I want you to know that, that there's a whole nother life waiting for you that just starts with you changing on the inside. And then that's going to get reflected in your external world. That's what I really want you to hear in, in these videos and, and to hear in the things that I'm trying to share with you. It's not to make you bad or wrong. It's, it's to give you a new 
mindset and a new perspective over the things that you really do have control over to change. And I know it feels hard and I know some days it might feel impossible, but I am here to tell you, if I could get myself out of these issues, I promise you that you can too. So for me, I wanted to blame anyone and everything else, just like most of us, if we're being honest, I wanted to blame, or not wanted to, I did. I blamed my husband. Uh, I had a lot of blame towards my dad. I wanted to blame my family. I wanted to blame my past relationships with men that didn't work out. I wanted to blame my job, my money situation, my upbringing. That's really, really common. But let me show you what this looks like. So I drew up a little diagram um, that I share with people that I work with to help them understand this. So this was my life. So let me get this up really quick. Hopefully it'll work. Oh, good. So I hope you can see this okay. If not, um, I'm not quite sure how to make it bigger, but hopefully it's coming through. Um, so what I have here in the middle is a sad face. And that represented all those problems that I had, or it might represent the challenges and problems you are up against or the unhappiness you might be experiencing in your life and in your marriage. And then there's six circles and I've got to go over and look at mine. So, you know, I, I was blaming my husband, my dad, my family, my upbringing, money, my past relationships with men um, for, for how I was feeling, um, my, my lack of confidence, lack of self-esteem. Um, all those issues I shared with you. And, and and this is what I see time and time again with the men and women that I work with. This is what we do. It's natural to us as humans to look outside of ourselves to, to see who or what might be responsible for the problems in our life. And we want to try to fix those outside things. But again, if we think of that second principle, that the only person you have any control over to change is yourself, when you look at it this way, there's really nothing you can do. And I like to think of this diagram as a very goofy looking six legged spider. And I always make the joke. That's the only time I'll talk about spiders. Um, I'm not a big fan, um, but I like to think of this as a very goofy looking six legged spider. And what happens is we begin to weave this web of stories throughout our life of, of all of our life experiences and all the things we've been through and all the things that have happened to us to explain why we're stuck where we are at. And we get caught in that web and we can't get out. So we have to do something different. And what we have to do is drop, learn to drop those stories and just focus on ourselves to like the quote, the best years of your life are the ones in which you decide your problems are your own. Notice now in the picture with just the sad face, there's none of those external relationships. It's just you. And I know that can feel very scary and very vulnerable and very exposing. But I promise being able to shift your perspective onto yourself and decide that your problems are your own, to, to decide that where you are in your life is, is because of you and how you're showing up and the choices and decisions that you've made, well, that can be very confronting. On the flip side of that, it's incredibly empowering because you have control over that. You have control over whether you are unhappy or not, I promise, even if it doesn't feel like it right now, there is a way. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. But it first has to, you have to be willing to say, okay, I want to drop those stories. I want to get out of that web that I've, I'm, I'm caught in. And I know I've got to be the one to do that. No one's going to come around, around and do that for you. You have to be the one to do it. And then what happens when you're willing to face yourself and, and willing to decide and see that your problems are your own, then what happens is then you do, oh, hold on. Then you do become responsible for your happiness and you're able to find your happiness within. And from that place, that's where you realize that you control your own destiny. And that's exactly, um, that's exactly what happened for me. Let me go ahead and take this off really quick is, oh, hold on. There we go. So that's exactly, exactly what happened for me. It is as I decided, I can't do this anymore. I can't live in these stories anymore. This isn't working, and I didn't like the direction my life was going. So I had to do some serious soul work, soul searching, and 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 get guidance and get help to learn a way that actually did work and, and set me free from that web. And and now, 
I am experiencing the best years of my life. My husband and I are in a place that I never dreamed we could be. My marriage feels exactly like I dreamed it would, where my husband and I feel like a team, where I see the wonderful man that he is because I've dropped all those stories of blame. It doesn't feel like an emergency anymore, which is wonderful because then I can focus on me and my dreams and the things that I want to accomplish in my life because my marriage isn't an emergency anymore. And I've untangled myself from being enmeshed with my husband and looking for him to change or be different for me to be happy. So that frees up all this time and energy for me so that I can fill my own cup, so to speak. And then bring all of who I am into my marriage, into my life, into my family. And I can promise you all of those relationships have completely changed. I, By being able to let go of those stories that I dragged around forever, I have a completely different relationship with my dad. As I mentioned just a little bit ago, I had a lot of blame towards my dad. And as I've learned to take responsibility and own my problems as my own and empower myself to change and be responsible for my happiness. I get to see my dad in a whole new light, um, that, that he was perfect just the way he was, that the things that I blamed him for growing up and where I was stuck in, in, in my early adulthood, it was so nice to let those things go because now I can actually have a relationship with him and, and look up to him and be grateful that he's exactly who he was, that when I blamed him for everything, I couldn't really even see who he was. And that was the same with my husband, the rest of my family, um, and the other relationships in my life. And now I get to live my best years, but it's only looking up from here. And there's opportunities and possibilities in my life because I'm willing to look at myself and take responsibility. And, and that's what I teach women to do. It was very important to me in my own life. And, and what I hope to teach other women and empower you to do is to take a look at personal integrity. That when you when you have personal integrity and you're developing that in yourself and in your life, everything changes. Because those relationships, your marriage, your, your family, your kids, those relationships that you struggle in are a reflection of the relationship that you have with yourself. So I'm gonna say that again, the, the issues and the challenges that you have in those different relationships in your life, whether it be your marriage, your job, your children, your family. They're a reflection of the relationship you have with yourself. So if you're not in integrity with yourself and and showing up your best in your life, and and I like to say putting your big girl pants on and, and facing the issues and actually, oops, deciding to do something about them. That, that that shows when you're willing to do that, that you have personal integrity. And then all those issues you're seeing and those other relationships begin to change and begin to shift. If you don't, and you're not living in integrity and you're not showing up as your best self and willing to put your big girl pants on and, and face those issues and, and take those problems on as your own so you can be in control of your destiny, then you're gonna stay stuck in the same problems and get and continue to get those mirrored back. So you can ask yourself, what kind of woman do you want to be? I have to ask myself the same question actually again and again and again, because personal integrity is a daily recommitment to myself. It's a daily recommitment to yourself. So it's something I have to revisit when I'm up against a challenge, when I'm up against something difficult in my life, then I have to stop and ask myself, okay, what kind of woman do I want to be? Do I want to be one that complains and commiserates with the, the other women and, and people in my life and be weak? and give up and run away when things get hard? Or do I want to be the kind of woman who perseveres and has resilience and takes care of my life and takes care of the issues and focuses on the things I have control over to change, which is myself? And it's very important to me that I choose that that last one, that I choose to be a woman of integrity, because when I do, everything changes and I get to live the best years of my life and I get to be in control of of where I'm going and, and what the experience of my marriage is and my other relationships and my job and my family and, and my money situation. And that feels a lot better. Is it hard work? Absolutely. But it's the best hard work you can ever do. And, and it's completely worth it um, to, to have that time and have that energy for yourself and go after your dreams. That's what this is really about. 
So just to kind of recap and, and wrap up, thank you for joining me today. Um, and I wanted to come on, the, the title was How to Break the Chains That Bind You and Your Marriage. And I wanted to come on and just really um, share with you how to, the, the quote, to go over the quote I posted last week and share with you how to actually start to do that. So again, the best years of your life are the ones in which you decide your problems are your own. You do not blame them on your mother, the ecology, or the president. You realize that you are in control of your own destiny and that in order to do that, you got to drop the blame and you got to realize you are where you are and having the problems you are having because of yourself, not to beat yourself up or make yourself wrong or bad, but so you can be empowered to change and, and actually create the life and marriage that you want. So that's what we were talking about today. And I hope that inspires you to take a new look and have a new perspective on where you are at in your life. And if I can support you in that, this is what I help women do every single day because it is hard work. And it takes someone who can hold our hands and guide us in the right ways with the right tools and the right strategies to look within, um, to be able to see how we are responsible to break through those stories. Because I promise you, they feel really, really real. And we really believe they're our reality. So you got to be open to seeing your reality might be different than those stories that you're telling yourself. And you need someone to help you break through that. I did. I couldn't do it on my own. I needed someone to show me the way and to pave the path. And that is what I have done for the women that I work with. So if you would like to talk and get underneath your stories and see the real problems and the real issues that are going on in your marriage and your life, that you've tried counseling, you've tried marriage counseling, you've read all the books, you've read the love languages, and none of it's working, I get it because I was there too. And I tried all those things. So let's talk. And I can get you underneath the stories to see what's really going on and, and help you come up with a step-by-step -step action plan to make real lasting change in your marriage, in your life. And if we're a good fit to work together, we can talk about that too. And if we're not, that's okay. I'll be honest with you. This isn't for everyone. And, and I'm very honest about that when I talk to women to help them get clear. But even if we're not a good fit, let's let's chat. Like, let's get you some clarity. I promise that It'll be the best hour that you've spent on yourself and your marriage in a long time, and it will provide massive value to you. Um, so if you would like to do that, I offer a free one-hour breakthrough session um, where we'll get on the phone or on video chat and, and give you the attention time and that you need so you can get clarity. So you can private message me, and we'll get a time set up. And thank you so much again for joining me today and being patient that this didn't work out yesterday. Um, so, uh, I will, I will see you again next week and I hope you all have a great day. Okay. Bye.